In this video, I went through a playlist of over a hundred examples and found the best eight examples that I could for how to write the equation of a parabola in conic sections. So we're going to deal with when we're given information such as the vertex, the foci, the directrix, as well as even a point that lies on the parabola to be able to write the equation of that parabola in standard form. All of those examples are going to be inside of this video. And I guarantee you by the time you've watched this video from example one, all the way to the end, you will have a better understanding of how to write the equation of a parabola in standard form. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. So we've talked about two different formulas, right? We talked about a formula um, when we have a vertical parabola, either it opens up or opens down. But then we also introduced a formula for horizontally, right? Okay. So right now they're saying find the standard form of the equation if we have a vertex at 2 comma 1 and a focus at 2 comma 4. So right now I, I need to determine, well, which formula am I going to be using with the focus? Am I going to use the vertical and the horizontal? So the best thing I would tell you guys to do first is to plot the points and see which one would make sense. So let's uh, plot the two points here. So if I have a vertex at 2 comma 1, and then I have a focus at 2, comma 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now remember, the definition of a parabola is the set of points that are equidistant from a focus and your directrix. So remember, our directrix has to be the opposite direction from our focus. So if our focus is up, our directrix, so this distance is 1, 2, 3, um, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's right there. So there's our focus, and then this one's going to be up three, so now one, two, three. So we don't really have to write our directrix. But now you guys can see, here's our directrix, here's our focus. What way is the parabola going to do? Is it going to open up, down, left, right? Which way is our parabola going to open up? Anybody? Bueller? Right. Yeah, but which way? Is it going to open up? Is it going to open down, left, right? Up, up right? Because it always is going to open so it contains your focus. Because remember, these distances, and I know my parabola is not the best, but you remember the distance from the focus to the directrix has to be equal for your parabola. So your parabola is always going to contain inside of it its focus. Is it always going to have the same number? Like, I'm guessing how the x is, how the x is. Remember, when it's a vertical, Right? When you have a vertical, it means it opens up or opens down. Yes, your focus and your, um, your, focus and your vertex are going to rely have the same x coordinate. And if it was horizontal, they'd have the same y coordinate. So, so now, we, now we know we're dealing with a parabola that's going to be vertical. So we can write the equation. So we have x minus h squared equals 4p times x, or I'm sorry, times y minus k. All right? So they said find the standard form. So we know that we have our vertex, which is our h and our k. So we can plug that in. All right? So that was our h and our k. That's from what we've done before. But now we need to look at what is our p. Remember, the p is your distance from your vertex to your focus. And it's also a distance from your vertex to your directrix. But we're just going to be looking primarily and seeing what is this absolute value. Obviously, it's positive to the focus and negative to the directrix. But the absolute value of that is going to be 3. three. Well, I'm sorry. Your p, we're just going to be looking at the positive value. Since this opens up, we're going to want to make sure it's positive. So we notice that this is going to be 3, because obviously, if our if our vertex opened down, the, this p would be negative, right? So we're just going to look at from the um, from this distance when it's going from your vertex to your focus, which would be 3. So we'd have x minus 2 squared equals 4 times 3, y minus 1. All right? So this is going back to our standard form, but could we write this back into a, uh, a standard equation, standard form that we've done before? Yeah. So. We have like this. Um, so now you could just do x minus 4x plus 4 equals 12y minus 12. 
Guess it is. All right, then what you could do is you could add the 12 to the other side. So you have x squared minus 4x plus 16 equals 12y. Then you want to get the y by itself, right? So we divide by 12. And rather than having each one of these terms divide by 12, we could just say it's going to be y equals 1 12th times x squared minus 4x plus 16. Or you could have every term simplified every term by dividing by 12 and leave them as fractions. So you'd have 1 12th x squared minus 1 3rd x um, plus uh, 4 oh, 4 thirds. You could do it that way as well. To a first grader, that's kind of a big deal. You don't understand. You just see ambulances come in, and it's like, wow, this is kind of serious. But um, then you just got to think, now as a teacher, just imagine what that like, felt like or looked like. Yeah. So, um, so we have the vertex. Is there any other information on this? OK. Um, find the vertex standard form of the equation of the parabola. 47. So we have the vertex is 5, 2, and the focus is at 3, 2. All right? So let's go and plot these points. Because the first thing we need to do, guys, is determine, is this a vertical or a horizontal parabola? All right? We need to determine this. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's plot what we're given. They say the vertex <coughs> is at 5, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So I plot that point. Right? Everybody might not have no, any idea what to do here, but we can all plot a point, right? We know that's the vertex. Then the focus is at 3, 2. 1, 2, 3, up 2. Now remember, when you look at your diagram for the parabolas, what we've been dealing with is the focus is in the inside of that parabola, right? Where, where we said like kind of was the focus of all the, um, everything that kind of directs towards your focus. So therefore, if I just did a rough sketch, I know my parabola can't be vertical. Can't be, or it can't be, you know, up or down. It can't be to the right, but it's going to look something like this, all right? Correct. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So now <coughs> that we know that's going to be a horizontal. We need to write in the form. Okay. So what is going to be our standard form of a horizontal? Well, remember horizontal means we're going to have y squared squared equals 4p times x minus h. Okay? So now, ladies and gentlemen, let's just take a look at what information we've been provided, and let's just plug it in. The one thing, um, oh, uh, I should probably go back here. Um, so one thing we notice is our focus, our um, uh, vertex, 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 what am I looking at? OK, so we can plug in our vertex, right? So our vertex is going to be 5, 2. So when you take your vertex, and you can plug that in for x is going to be your 5. So you say y minus 2 squared equals 4 times p and then x um, minus 5. All right? Um, and then the next thing, I forgot to write in, so we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is 5 comma 2, right? And then we could also write in that our focus was at 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, up 2. Now we could also write in, actually, what did they just ask for? They just want us to find the standard form of the equation on the problem, right? So that's all we need to do. So the next thing is they tell us what P is. Well, they don't tell us what P is. We need to figure out what P is. Well, remember, P is, yeah, this distance, right? So that distance was. 2. So I use plug in 2 and for p. So you have y minus 2 squared equals 4 times 2 times x minus 5. y minus 2 squared 
equals 8 times x minus 5. And that's going to be your standard form of your parabola for any point x and y. That's it. That's all you have to do. Okay. Uh, is this number 41, I believe? 49. All right, so the good question is actually that's the first thing I want to answer is how do you, what do you know, because they're asking us to first find the standard form of the equation. So to find the standard form of the equation, we have two equations, right? We have a standard form equation. We can write x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k, or we could do y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. So there's two different equations we could all oh, get to. There's two different equations, guys, we could use. So how do we know which one to use, right? And which one's going to help us find the standard form? So the best thing I'd like to do is just say, just plot what information they're giving you, right? Because remember, when we were doing, uh, we were finding the directrix and the focus, the first thing I asked you is what squared, the x or the y? When you know the x is squared, it opens up or down. When the y is squared, it opens left or right, correct? So let's go ahead and just graph what we have. So we have a vertex at 0, 2. Then we have a directrix at whatever. Vertex is at 0, 4. So my vertex is at 0, 4. Directrix is at 0, 2. Okay. Well, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, since we now know we have a horizontal, does our graph cr cross the um, directrix? Yes. Yeah. Goes the opposite, right? No, it's not going to go down because your 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 um, remember your focus is inside your parabola and your directrix is opposite to being outside the parabola, right? Because they're the exact same distance. So we know our graph can't open down, and if it opened to the right or to the left, then it cross the directrix as well. So the only possible point. For us to do is have and to say that oh my first my graph has to open up right it's always going to go in the opposite direction of your directrix and if your directrix is horizontal then you know your graph has to open up it can't open left or right right yes yeah okay so now how do we find the value of p well ladies and gentlemen remember that this distance I don't know what that is this distance is the same right here. So this distance we count what? One, two units. Then we know that this distance has to be two units as well. Right? But since uh, to find my, so remember this is to your directrix and this is to my focus, which here is my vertex. So if I'm going up two units to get to my focus, Right? And really, I have to go down to units to get to my directors. When I go up to units to get to my focus, I know now the p value is equal to what? Zero. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the value of p, the value of p, if you want to write this down, write it down. The value of p is the distance from your vertex to your focus. It can be positive, it can be negative. But it's the distance from your vertex to your focus. It doesn't matter if it's vertical or if it's horizontal, it's that distance from your focus to your vertex, or to your vertex to your focus. And then remember, to go from your vertex to your directrix is gonna be that exact same distance in the opposite direction, okay? All right, so now, we know that the graph opens up or down, so which formula am I gonna use? X squared or Y squared? X squared, X squared right? So you do x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k. So now let's just plug in what we know. We know the vertex is 0, 4. Remember, it's opposite 0, 4. So uh, we have x minus 0 squared equals 4 times p, which we said was 2, times y opposite of 4, right there. So now, we need to just write this in our standard form. So um, let's say this becomes x squared equals 8 times y minus 4. Distributive property, x squared equals 8y minus 32. Then let's solve for y. 
right? Because that's, remember, our standard form looks like this, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So we've got to solve for y. So we have x squared plus 32 equals 8y. Um, let's divide by 1 8, or multiply by 1 8, which is the same thing as divided by 8. So therefore I can say y equals 1 8 times x squared plus 32. If you want to write it as y equals x squared divided by 8 plus 4, that's fine, that's fine as well. Okay, but I'll just leave it at that point. Does that make sense? How oh, this is close to that form, right? Your standard form. Okay, so the main important thing, guys, is to first determine what formula you're going to use. And once you know what formula, you just plug in the information that you know. All right? So, next one. Um, we go ahead and we ask Mateo, do you remember the first rule when I said when writing the equation and you're given information? Do you remember what the first rule that I said? Just plot the information. Just plot the information. You have the vertex. That's a point. That's pretty easy to plot. 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Perfect. Okay. The next one is a directrix, which is a line. So we've got to make sure we're drafting a line. So it's x equals 6. That means it's going to produce a vertical line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Vertical line. Right? So we have vertex, directrix. Now, just based on this information alone, do I know if the graph opens up, down, left, or right? Yeah. Yeah. Opens up to the left. It's always away from the directrix, right? So my vertex opens up somewhere like this. Now, to find the focus, so anyways, we know the vertex is there. Um, but be able, to be able to write the equation, though, we need to find p. So remember, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. However, that same distance is equidistant from the vertex to the directrix. So, so if this case is 1, 2, so the distance from the vertex to the directrix is positive 2, that means the distance from the vertex to the directrix is going to be negative. this negative 2. So there's my new focus. Now, I'm not asking what the focus is. They're asking us for just to write the equation. So we know that that is p. So negative 2 is p. And here's your h, and here's your k. Now, since the graph opens up to the right, I'm sorry, to the since the graph opens up to the left, we use the equation y equals k squared equals 4p times x minus h. And then we just plug in the information we have. So y minus h, which is 3, squared equals 4 times negative 2 times x minus 4. I'm sorry, say that your question again? You're saying because that one's going to the right too? The definition of p, p represents the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So yes, the, va the distance, what I want you to understand is the distance is the same. Negative 2 and 2 they have the same distance, but the direction makes that negative because you're going to the left. So that's why it's a negative 2. For instance, I mean, and anyways, you know, think about like, remember when we had a quadratic and we had a negative a? It made the graph open down. You can think of this as like a negative. It's, it's negative. So it's making it go in the negative direction, which would be to the left. So my final answer is y equals negative 3 squared equals negative 8 times x minus 4. And that's all they asked. Done. OK? OK. So um, ladies and gentlemen, on a problem like this, we have two different formulas, right? We could use one where x is squared, or we could use one where y is squared. But to do that, we need to determine which formula are we going to want to use. So the only thing information I'm giving, guys, is a focus 2 comma 2 and a director to x equals negative 6. So rather than trying to think in your head, you know, which one do I have to use, let's just go ahead and plot it and see what would make sense. So if I was going to plot this, if I have a focus at 2 comma 2, and then my directrix is x equals negative 2, which is a vertical line. So what can my parabola look like? Well, if you guys remember what I taught you. Now remember, your focus is inside your parabola, and your directrix is below, right? It didn't matter what the parabola looked like. You always had a focus 
within your parabola, and then your directrix was the opposite out of there. So right now, I have a directrix right here. So is my parabola going to open up, I'm sorry, to the left, to the right, up or down? Yeah, it has to open up to the right, correct? Has to. If it opens up to the right, it's going to cross the directrix, which doesn't make sense. Opens up down, it crosses the directrix. If it opens up to the left, it crosses the directrix. Remember, the distance to your directrix is exactly the same as your distance to your focus. They're exactly the same distance. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the distance from my focus to my vertex is exactly equal to my vertex to my directrix. Right? So let's see how far it is to my directrix to my focus. One, two, three, four. So if a whole length is four units, and I said that the middle point is equal one way as it is equal to the other way, then what's in the middle? What's the distance between your vertex? How, where is my vertex in here? It has to be equal between the, yeah, so what's the middle? Yeah, it's at zero, right? Correct. So therefore, my vertex, you guys can see in this case, Marco, is at 0, 2. And why do I know that again? Because I know that this distance, which is p, is equal to 2. And even though I'm going in the negative direction, we know that that distance is 2 as well, right? Because the distance between your directrix and your vertex and your vertex and your focus is exactly the same. But since I'm going to the right, my p-value equals 2. All right, so my graph's going to look something like this. We know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I know what the vertex is, and I know my p-value is equal to 2. Is that enough information now for me to write an equation? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I don't know. Let's check it out. If you're lucky. Yep. It's just because of the focus, right? Like, you know, it's like I mean, why is it not at 0, 0? It, that's what I'm saying. It's just because of the focus. Your focus and your vertex are going to be on the same. They're both going to be on the line of symmetry. Okay. All right, so now we know that we have a horizontal parabola. So therefore, I have to use, and we know it, so it's going to be y squared. So therefore, I have to do y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. Correct? Yes. We have to use that formula. We can't use the x squared because the x squared is the preferred parabola up and down. Just can't. Yes, Nico? No, you're good? Okay. No. So this one's for the one that's going left and right. Now, we know what our vertex is h comma k. So we have y minus 2 squared equals 4 times 2, x minus 0. Well, so ladies and gentlemen, remember standard form of equation. We're solving for a variable and we're setting that equal to our quadratic. So if I have a y squared, I'm going to want to solve for the y. So what I need to do, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is foil this out. Well, it's a binomial squared, so it should be too bad. minus 0 is just x, so 8 times x is just 8x. Then let's divide by 8. So I get x. So x equals 1 8 y squared minus 1 half y plus 1 half. Or you can do it without fractions. You can say x equals 1 8 y squared minus 4y plus 4. Okay. Does everybody see what I did? See how it's now in the standard form? Yes. Rather than like that? Okay, and that's it. So.
you're given a focus. Everybody in this class should know that the focus is a point. Negative 2, positive 2. Label it focus. The directrix is a line. y equals 6. That is a horizontal line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. OK. Now, if you kind of forget, which a lot of students do, think back to this or keep this. If you're given your focus and your directrix, right, your parabola goes towards your focus and away from your directrix, right? Does everybody say that? goes away from the directrix, the line, that purple line, and it goes towards your focus. So is this going to be a horizontal or a vertical? Is it going left and right? No, it's going down, right? I don't know what the graph looks like, but it's going somewhere like this. It's going towards the focus. So um, there's a couple things we also need to remember. Also, in addition to that, your vertex, which we need to figure out because we need to know what h and k is, your vertex is in between. It's, in, it's right in the middle. Right in the middle. So can we, find the mid, can we find the middle distance between our focus and our directrix? Yeah, just let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's right at two. That's my vertex. It's actually right there. So what is that point? So my vertex is at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's important because that's my h and that's my k. Now, if my horizontal looks like this, here's what my vertical looks like. It's just the exact opposite, but my h is squared. And then again, remember, Daniel, that h always goes with x, y always goes with k. I will mix it up. I have some videos where I make that mistake, Nick. So we've got to be careful that we don't do like the other mistake. So you basically need to know those two equations. And then we need to figure out p. So p is the distance from our vertex to our focus, which is how far? 2, but it's going down. So therefore, it's in the positive or negative direction? Negative, negative direction. So you'd say p is equal to negative 2. So x minus a negative 2 squared equals 4 times negative 2, y minus 4. Does everybody see how I plugged in everything? Then we just simplify. x plus 2 squared equals negative 8 times y minus 4. So on this, we have a couple points. Now, when, general, when, when I go through these types of problems and on your test, I'm going to give you guys some information. And what I like to tell students when you're getting started is plot the graph. You know, if they give you a point and something, plot it. See what, see what equation. Now, fortunately for this problem, they already gave us an equation, which is awesome because now we know at least what the parabola looks like. And we can determine that this parabola goes facing down. So therefore, we need to determine what the formula we're going to use. Is it going to be the x squared or the y squared? So then I will pick on. What would it be? X squared or the y squared? Because that's what you need to be doing right now. What would you say? Uh, X squared. Good, good. You, when you have people next to you telling you the answer, it's very helpful, right? So yes, the x is, x is squared. That's what you, I want you to be paying attention with this, so therefore you know that, and you won't make that mistake on your test. All right. So yes, the x is squared. That's the formula. We're not going to use the one with the y squared that we did on the homework quiz. right? We're not going to use that formula. We're going to use this one. So now let's go and pl plug in the information that we need. Now we notice that we have h and k, remember, represent the vertex, correct? So we see the vertex. Remember, the vertex is the highest or the lowest point, the maximum or the minimum of a parabola. So in this case, our vertex is 3, 1. So remember, h, it's just hk, right? That's what the vertex is. So therefore, I can say x minus h. y minus k. All right. So now we have three unknowns, the x, the y, and the p. Remember, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. We don't know the information on the focus, so this is going to be difficult information. However, remember, x and y represent all the set of points that lie on that shape of the parabola, right? They set all the set of points. Well, do we know any points that lie on the line? Yeah, we actually know two of them, right? Well, we don't need two of them. We only need one. So really, um, you guys can just pick whatever points you want to. I'll pick 2, 0. 
All right? And remember, that's a coordinate point, x, y. So let's plug 2 in for x and 0 in for y. And you guys now see by plugging in x and y and plugging in the information for the vertex, I now only need to solve for p, correct? And that's perfect because we just need to find the value of p. So this becomes negative 1 squared equals negative 4p. Right? I'm just doing a little math here. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 4p is negative 4p. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is uh, 1. Then I divide by negative 4. So therefore, p equals a negative 1 fourth. Now, since p is negative, does it make sense that my parabola is facing down? Yeah. Yes. OK, so I did my math at least hopefully correctly. But I know that it makes sense because that should be negative. If it was positive, I would have known I did something wrong. So now they're asking us to find the standard form. Well, now we know the value of p, and we know the vertex. So I go back to the equation. I say x minus uh, 3 squared equals 4 times negative 1 fourth times y minus 1. Now again, remember, we're writing the standard form. That's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to have to expand this and then multiply this out. So this is a binomial squared, which you guys should hopefully get used to. Multiplying binomial squares produce perfect squares. So that's x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 4 times negative uh, 1 fourth is just going to be negative 1 times y minus 1. Distribute that. x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals a negative y plus 1. So I can subtract the 1 x squared minus 6x uh, plus 8 equals negative y. Divide by negative 1 on both sides. y equals a negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. So that would be my standard form. Make sense? So just use the information, the main important thing. And remember, when we're writing the standard form, we want to have the variables x and y because we want to represent x and y represent all the points. But we, only, we can use two of the points to help us deter, determine the value of p. All right, any last questions on that? Feel good? OK. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, write the equation of the ellipse when given a vertex, a point, and a uh, y equals 0 axis of symmetry. So since we know y equals 0 is the axis of symmetry, I know it's going to be a horizontal axis of symmetry. Therefore, my parabola is going to either open up to the right or to the left. And I can then use this um, equation, y minus k squared equals 4, 4p times x minus h. Now, what's nice about that is I know that the vertex is in the form of h comma k. And since my vertex here is 0, 0, I can plug 0 in for h and k and just get y squared equals 4p times x minus 0, which is just x. But the problem is we still don't know what 4 is. Uh, we still don't know what p is. So let's just plot these points here real quick. So I have 0, 0. And I have the point negative 2 up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then y equals 0 is my axis of symmetry. So therefore, I can't have the graph open up to the right. It has to open up to the left, right? But I need to figure out what is my focus. Where is my focus going to be? So the only thing I know is this point, which is negative 2 comma 6. But remember, all points that are on the parabola are made up of an x and a y coordinate. So if I plug in my x and y coordinate into that equation, I can solve for p because that's the only variable I still won't know. So therefore, I'll plug in 6 in for y, and then 4p times x, which is negative 2. Therefore, I get 36 equals negative 8p divided by negative 8 divide by negative 8. And I get 36 divided by negative 8. Uh, let's see. It goes into 4. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, tired. Um, goes into 32. So that'd be 4.5. Or 4 and a half, right? Um, actually, let's forget fractions. I don't like fractions. Uh, let's go ahead and do this as 9 halves. Negative 9 halves equals p. OK. So now negative 9 halves equals p. Going back to my equation, that's all I simply need to do is plug in for p. So I had 
y squared equals 4p times x. Well, now I know what p is. Y, e, y squared equals 4 times negative 9 halves x. And to see the reason why I like having fractions? Because then I can see, oh, that simply goes y squared equals a negative 18x. Now to solve for x, I divide by negative 18. And x equals negative 18y squared. Um, and therefore, let's make sense. Does that make sense that the focus to be a negative p 4.5? Yes, it does work. Um, that's how we'd like to write our equation, which again will give us an equation with a parabola open up to the left. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the uh, equation of ellipse in your standard form. Thanks.